In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build and train this AI, which shows you what color the text should be on top of another colored object. And to do that, I'm gonna first show you a really simple example and then go into this more complex example. And all of this code is absolutely beginner friendly. So even if you know nothing about AI or machine learning, you're gonna learn everything you need to know to do this in this one video. Let's get started now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. Now to get started, I have that example I showed you earlier where we can train our algorithm to tell it what color we want the text to be. For example, this should be black, so we'll click black. And down here we can see that it's guessing correctly pretty much every single time because I've trained this for quite a while. So as you can see, I'm gonna show you how to build this, but to get started, I actually wanna show you a simpler example so we can learn the concepts of this AI machine learning. And to do all of this machine learning, we're gonna use a library called brain.js, which is just a nice wrapper around some of these different neural network AI stuff that allows us to more easily and quickly build out these neural networks without having to understand all of the complex math that goes on behind the scenes. So to download this, all we need to do is just copy this script tag here for the CDN, and we're gonna paste that into our index.html file, which this is just boilerplate HTML. Then I'm going to have a new script down here, which is going to be for our actual code. We'll call it script.js. I'm gonna make sure to defer both of these so they load after the HTML down here. And if I save that, we can create our script.js. And now inside of here, we have access to work with this neural network using this BrainJS API. And they have quite a few examples you can go into over here, as well as some documentation on their GitHub page for exactly how to use this. So you can dive in more if you want, but I'm gonna show you some of the basic stuff that you can do. The very first thing we can do to get started over here is just to say brain.neural, whoops, neural network. And this is just going to be creating a new object. So we'll say new brain.neural network, and we can pass in here any options that we want. As you can see here, there's some configuration values if I zoom this in. But for our purposes, we're just gonna leave all of this as the default. We're just gonna set this to a variable called net. This is gonna be our neural network. And since neural networks are a bit confusing, there's a nice handy library built into this brain.js that allows us to print out and visualize our neural network. So over here, I have our index page opened up. So what we can do is just come down here and say brain.utilities.2svg. We pass it in our neural network. This is gonna give us back HTML that is going to render this as an SVG. So if we just create an element, we'll call it diagram. And then we select that element down here by saying const diagram is equal to document.getElementById of diagram. And then we can just set our inner HTML to that. So inner HTML is going to be equal to this here. Make sure I spell diagram correctly. And now if I save, nothing is actually going to show up yet. And the reason for that is our neural network here that we have doesn't actually know what our inputs or our outputs are. It doesn't really know how to render itself because we haven't given it any information yet. So in order to give it that information, we need to call a method train on our neural network. And this method is going to take in an array and this array is going to be all of our different training data. So in our case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build out an example which learns how to do XOR operations. And XOR stands for exclusive OR, so it's going to return one when you have zero, one, or one, zero, but otherwise it's going to return zero in the case of zero, zero, and one, one. Essentially, it only returns one or true in the case that you have exclusive OR, where you have one thing and not the other thing. So this training takes an object, an array of objects, and each object has an input property, and we're gonna have an output property. And this input property is going to take in our inputs in the form of an array. So we're gonna have zero, zero, for example, as our first input, and we know that this should output zero. And we need to make sure that we have arrays here for our input and our outputs. So we can't just have our output be zero. We need this to be an array that has a value of zero. Let's copy this down because we're gonna have a few more training points. For example, we know that one zero is going to be outputting one because it's one and not the other. We're gonna do a similar thing for zero one, which again is going to output one in our exclusive or case. And then lastly, one and one is going to be zero because it's not one and not the other, it's actually both. So that is not exclusive or. 
So now that we have that done, we've trained our algorithm so it knows how it needs to run and how it needs to operate. So if we save this, we should see over here, we now have our diagram being run presented. Over here on the left side, we have our green, which is our inputs. So zero and zero or one and zero. That's these two green nodes here. Then we have these pinkish salmon colored nodes in the middle. This is called your hidden layer, and it's where you do some calculations on these inputs to get a new output. And this blue over here is our output. So in order to fine tune this hidden layer section even more, what we can do is pass in a property to our neural network, which is called hidden layers, which is an array. And this array is how many hidden layers you want on each section. So we could say four, for example, and now we have four nodes in this middle hidden layer. We could say four, five, six, and then we're gonna have three different hidden layers, one with four nodes, one with five nodes, and one with six nodes. And essentially the larger and more complex you make this hidden layer section, potentially the better that your algorithm is going to do at solving your problem because it has more computations it can go through, but it's going to become slower to do those computations and slower to actually train your algorithm. That's why for this example, we're just gonna leave this at the default, which is just these three hidden layers here. And essentially what this neural network does is it takes our input and it sends it to all three of these different hidden layers. It does some form of calculation on that number, and then it gives us an output. And the closer our output is to this one value, the less changes it needs to make. So it's going to give us an output, and if that output is really far off, it's gonna come backwards and say, okay, all of these nodes in the middle, you need to change your calculation. Your calculation was incorrect. And then it's gonna run again. It's gonna pass in zero, zero, go through these different nodes, give us an output, and it's going to update these middle nodes again based on the value that is returned because we know what the output should be. So as the output is closer and closer to that value, we make less and less changes to these nodes until we get close enough for our purposes. So in order to test how this actually works, what we can do is call net.run. This is allowing us to actually perform an action on our AI. So we trained our AI given this data, and now we want to test it to see if it learned. So we're just gonna pass in zero, zero, and I wanna see what this outputs. So we can say console.log of that. And now if I just inspect this here over to our console, you can see we get an array here, which has returned a value. And this value is 0 0.05194. So essentially it's really close to zero. And that's correct because zero, zero should return to us zero. If we put in one zero here, we're gonna get an array, and as you can see, this is really close to the value one, it's 0.93. And the reason that it's not returning one or zero, and it's returning some decimal that's close to that value, is because this is trying to do some calculations and algorithms to learn what the value is. It can't just look at this and say, okay, zero, zero is always zero, because what if we pass in something that's not in this input list? Your algorithm is trying to figure that out, and your AI is trying to learn and figure out what that value is being, so it's essentially its best guess. It's saying, I'm about 93% sure this should be a one. So it's thinking that it's going to be a one and it's your best guess at that value, which is why you're never gonna really get exact values of one or zero. You're gonna get something that's close to that value. In our case, 0.93 or 0.05 is saying, well, you're close enough to that value. Now, one problem with this is that an XOR table only has four different types of inputs when you're using these values like this. So it's not really a good example for why you would want to use AI or an algorithm because you could just write an algorithm that does these four operations and you don't need this big fancy AI to do that. But this is a great learning place to figure out exactly kind of how the AI works, how it you know, takes these hidden layers and updates their calculations as it goes through this training data because it actually iterates through this hundreds and thousands of times to make sure that it updates these hidden layers to be the exact values it needs to be before you start running data through it. So now I wanna move on to that more complex example. We're actually gonna train our algorithm to say, okay, this should be white, this should be black, or some combination in between. And then it's going to tell us on a brand new color that's not in the training data, what it should be, whether it should be white text or black text. So to get started with that, let's just use our same neural network. And for our training data, we're going to use a object here. And this object is going to be R, G, B. Essentially, we want to determine what the red value, the green value, and the blue value of our color are. And if you're used to CSS, then you know that this value will go between 0 and 255. But a problem is that when you're using AI and neural networks, it works best if your input is between 0 and 1. So instead of doing 0 to 255, we're going to convert that value to 0 to 1. So 0 would be black and 1 would be white. So we're just going to use 0 
0, 0, because this is going to be no red, no green, no blue, which is going to turn out to be black. So we're going to say our text should be 1, which is going to represent white in our case. We're going to do a very similar thing down here, which is going to be an input value. We're just going to down here do the exact opposite. So 100% blue, 100% green, 100% red is going to give us a white background color. So our text on top of that should be black. So we're going to pass in 0. And we're only going to use these two sets of training data. And we're just going to put this in a variable here called data, just to abstract this out a little bit. So there we go, we have our training data, and down here we're going to train on that data. And now if I just get rid of this console log, and we save this, you can see our input has changed. We now have three inputs, R, G, B, so we now have three different nodes that are green here for our inputs. Our hidden layer has stayed the same, and our output has stayed the same. But the problem is, is if we give this a value, for example, let's just come down here, console.log net.run, we're going to pass it an R of, let's say, 1, a green of 1, and a blue of 0. And we want to see what this is going to output for us. We just inspect over here, go to our console. You can see that it's saying that it's about 0.16, so it's kind of not that sure. It's thinking that the text should be black because it's closer to 0 than it is to 1, but it's really not super sure. And if we even change this to be like 0.5 for green and save, you now see it's 0 0.4, 0 0.38 here. And that's really uncertain. It's like almost 50-50 whether it should be white or it should be black. That's because we don't have very much training data. And it's kind of tedious to write out all of this training data by hand. So instead, I want to write some code where we can actually train the algorithm visually, where we can just click a button and tell it whether it should be white or whether it should be black. And we can use that data to actually come back and train our algorithm further and further until it gets to the point that it's accurate to the value that we want. So in order to do this, we need to make some changes to our index.html over here. Instead of having this diagram, we're going to remove this. And instead, we're going to have a div, which is going to be for our color. So we're going to say color here. And this is going to be a giant square, which is going to be our background color. And inside of here, we want to have different types of text. We're going to have a white text. We're going to have a black text, which doesn't even need a class because by default, the color will be black. And then we're going to have a guess text. So guess text. So this white text is always going to be white. The black text is always going to be black. And the guess text is essentially going to be our algorithm's guess at whether it should be white or it should be black. So we can see how it's learning and we can see if it's actually improving. And then we're going to want some buttons to choose whether it's going to be white or black. So we can come down here. We're going to create a button. This one's going to have an ID of white button. It's just going to say white. Copy that down. We're going to do a black button. Just like that. And then we're going to have a button here called print. And what this print button is going to do is it's essentially going to print out all of the data that we're going to use, all that training data that we're learning by clicking the white button, clicking the black button. So we can just copy that training data straight out of our console, paste it into our script, and use that going forward. Instead of using just these two data points, we'll have a ton of data to work with. So let's add a few styles here really quickly, just so we can actually see how this is going to be visually represented. The first thing I want to do is our color. And this is going to be essentially a square. So we're just going to give it a width and height, which are going to be 200 pixels. Just like that. We're going to give it a border, which is just five pixels solid black, just so we can see where this color ends. And we're going to change the display in here to flex so that we can center everything. So we're going to center our items and our content. And then we're going to change our flex direction to column just so our text shows up on top of each other instead of side by side. And then we have that dot white class here where I just want to change the color of our text to white. So now if we come over here, you can see that we have our color section, which is just going to be this square here. We have our white text, our black text, and our guest text, as well as our white, black, and print button. So now we can actually move on to the code to make our color change as well as to make these buttons save our data. So we'll just come down here. We'll get rid of this console log. We don't have this diagram anymore, so we can get rid of that. Now I want to select our different elements. So we're going to have our color element, which is document.get element by ID of color. We're going to do a very similar thing, but this is going to be for our guess. And this is that guess text that you see right over here, this black text. Then we're going to have our white button. 
which is just document dot get element by ID of white button. And have a few more of these. We're going to have our black button as well as our print button. So let's just make sure we have those typed out as we want black and print. There we go. And now we can actually work on setting this up. So the first thing I want to do is set a random color. And first we need a variable we can set that to. So we're just going to create a variable called the color and then we'll create that set random color function. And inside of here, I just want to get a random value between zero and one for R, G and B. So we can say color is going to be equal to R of math dot random. This is going to give us a random value from zero to one. I can do the same thing for our green value as well as our blue value. So now we have a random value between zero and one for red, green and blue. So we essentially have a completely random color. Then I can take our color element. And I just want to set the style for the background color to be equal to. We're going to come on a new line here because this is going to be fairly long. We're going to take our RGBA, and as you know, in CSS, this is a value between 0 and 255. So for R, what we're going to do is we're going to take our color dot R times 255. And we're going to do the same thing for green. So color dot G times 255. And lastly, we're going to do the same thing here for blue color dot B times 255. So now we have set our background color to that RGBA value. And if we save, you should see we get a random value for our background color every time we refresh our page. Now the next thing I want to do is get our guest text to change its color based on this color input. So that's actually fairly straightforward to do. We can take our guest element dot style dot color and we need to set it to again some RGBA value. So to do that we need to get our guess. So we can say const guess is going to be equal to net dot run and we're going to run our color through this because we have a random color RGB and we want to figure out what the actual color of our text should be based on this random background color. So that's what this guess is here. And we're just going to immediately get the first value from our guess. And that's because this is going to return an array. And we know that the first value in the array is going to be between zero and one and determine whether it's black or white. So now what we can do is take this, set the style for our color. And if our guess is greater than 0.5, that means that we should have a white color. So what we want to do is just return white. Otherwise, it's saying that it should be black. So we're going to return black just like that. Now you can see our guest text is going to randomly change its color. As we refresh it here a few times, we should eventually hit white as a guess. There you go. As you can see, we got that white text showing up because it's thinking this should be white text. But as you noticed, it wasn't very accurate as we went through that. And that's just because we have very little training data. So now let's work on the part where we can actually train our algorithm with these different buttons. So let's come down here. We can say white button dot add event listener on click. We want to call a function and this is just going to say choose color and we're going to pass in one because we know one represents white. We're going to do the same exact thing for our black button, but we're going to pass in zero here. So black button and we want to choose color zero. And then we want to create that function choose color with a value. And all we want to do in here is take our data, which is what we up here are training our algorithm on. And we just want to push a new value to that data. And this value is going to have an input, which is our random color. And it's going to have an output, which is just an array that contains our value, which as we know is going to be zero or one. Now with that done, all we need to do is choose a new random color by setting random color. And if we save here and we click white, for example, you should see we get a brand new random color. Click white again, random color. Same thing if we click black, we're going to get a new random color every single time. Now, in order to actually take this data that we keep pushing to our array here and retrain our algorithm on it, we're going to create a print function, which allows us to print out our data so we can just copy it, paste it back into our program, and then rerun it with that new set of data. So to do that, we'll create that function called print. And all this is going to do is console log json.stringify of our data. And we can just take our print to button, add an event listener for click. And we're going to call that print function just like that. So now what we can do is if we inspect, go over here, look at our console and we click print, you can see we have our normal two input values where we have black color should be white and white color should be black. And if we come over here and we say, okay, black is the you know, best color for this background color, we click black, and now we click print. 
you can see we have that new random color being printed here with an output of zero for black. For this one, let's say that white is the best text color. We click white, click print again, and now you can see down here we have that random color with an output of one for white. So if we just run this a few times, so we'll say white here, we'll say black, white, black for this one, white, and you know, we just keep running through this a few times, trying to figure out what the best color is going to be, the color that's going to contrast the best. And okay, let's say, you know, we've run it a few times. I think we're pretty accurate in what color should be contrasting. Click print, and we're gonna get a bunch of data. Let's just copy this data from here. And we're going to paste it in here for our data. And it's a little bit ugly. That's perfectly OK. If we save, though, it's going to retrain our algorithm, but it's going to use all of this new data instead of our old data. So now we have a bunch more different inputs. So as you can see, this has properly guessed you know, black. But let's say maybe it should be white. So we'll say white. And here, black seems to be correct. So we'll go with black. Black again seems correct. White's correct. As you can see, our guess is much closer to what the actual text color should be based on our contrast. So almost every time it's going to be correct. A few times it's wrong, but that's perfectly okay. And as we do this more and more, it's learning even more. So as you can say here, let's just say black, we'll say white, white, black, white, black. And let's just print out again and inspect Go over to our console. And you can see we have this huge input. Scroll down, get all of this. You can copy it over and come back in here and paste it. And now we even have more data that we can work with. Now, if we save, you can see that this guess is going to be even more accurate than it was before. It's never going to be 100% accurate, especially because there's some variance between what color is correct. It could be black or white. They both could kind of work for certain colors. But as we train this more and more, this input data is going to be more and more accurate. And at this point, it's accurate enough for most use cases, even with just this little bit of data. As you can see, this guess is almost always the correct value. And that's all there is to the basics of neural networks and AI. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other AI related videos linked over here and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.